and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancing. Because the faith kingdom. must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. Where we You're unto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. Genesis chapter 1 I'm going to combine two ideas I will show you what exactly God did which is what we are supposed to be doing and then the principle is basically the same but the application is vast I can use this to reprogram a person's business I can use it to reprogram a nation I can use it to program a ministry. I can use it to on the individual level. Ephesians chapter chapter five verse. Oh yeah, be ye therefore imitators of God as their children. Okay, you also be you followers of God as their children. And he's talking about walking in love there. Verse two. Walk ye in love as Christ also had loved us and had given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling servant. That is a good prayer for the day six. That is a very good prayer for day six. But the principle applies to the whole concept. We learn what God is doing and we follow suit as his children. Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. You know those kind of ways of imitating God. You find many scriptures on that. So whatever we see in John chapter 5, Jesus said, whatever I see the father do, the same thing I do. And in this particular case, it was raising the dead. Maybe I should show it to you. John chapter 5, verse 19. Or oh, let's read from verse 17. Jesus answered and said to them, My father walked until now, and I walk. I know you know he rested on the seventh day, so you, you probably believe God has been sleeping since 6,000 years. He is not. Because after the seventh day came the first day again, the guy went back to work. So Jesus said, my father is still walking till now. And me too, I'm following that pattern. Then look at the next line. Therefore, the Jews sought to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father. Therefore, making himself equal to God. Somebody might feel like that. Are you, are you trying to, who gave you a right to recreate, to reorder the system? I intend to write a book on it, recreating your world, and show practically how it is done. They wanted to kill him. They say he's making himself equal to God. Then verse 19, and Jesus answered, then answered Jesus and said unto them, Very, very, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seared the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these things also do at the sun. That is your job on earth. And that is a prayer too for day six. Day six is the creation of sonship. At a personal level it means I'm going to pray that I reproduce. That what God has put in me will not die with me. I must reproduce after my kind. But principally that day is about reproduction of divinity. That I start manifesting like God. And if I get all of these things in shape and miss the six, every other thing will be in shape, but the one that will govern it will be missing. Because the six is the day of creation of leadership. As the day dominion was created, was entrusted to man. So as a prayer for that day, but in terms of principle about what we're doing is um, we're just manifesting sonship. We're just operating like our father. Simple. 
He's a creator, we are creators. He's a dominator, we are dominators. Whatever he is, we are. Amen. So, that's the principle here. The son can of himself do nothing, but whatsoever he see the father do. For what is soever he doeth, that is the father, these also doeth the son likewise. For the father loveth the son, and showeth him all things that he himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that he may marvel. What is the greater work? What he did here is that he raised a crippled man from the pool of Bethsaida. And there were so many sick people there. He sneaked in there, found one man that had been there for a long time. According to the Bible, the man was there before Jesus was born. He was there for 38 years. And so they gave birth to Jesus. He, he ran away to Egypt with his parents, came back, grew to be 12, grew to be 18, grew to be 20, grew to be 30, started his ministry. The man was still suffering. So he walked down there and got that man healed and left every other person. But the Bible said there were multitudes of invalid people, all kinds of people there. Uh, some years ago, you know, the Lord had to talk, clear my head from that scripture and some other scriptures. But, um, you know, in, when we are younger, if you go for crusades and multitude of sick people come and then 10 get healed and 20 leave not healed, I focus my mind on those who are not healed than on those who are healed. And the question will be, why are they not healed? And sometimes it will cause you to lose the joy you should have over the ones that are healed. If a person is wearing white and there is one stop, it's human nature. We tend to focus on that one spot and leave out the whole white clothes. So we tend to remember more of what God didn't do than all the many things that he does. So this is one of the scriptures he used to clear my head then. That in the healing ministry, the important thing is not healing everybody. The important thing is healing somebody. Mm -hmm. If you heal everybody today, who will be healed tomorrow? You think uh, the next generation needs an, a demonstration of the power of God though. If I finish all the healing, which one will you heal? My father is still working. So the thing is ongoing. Where we stop, and that generation continues. QED. So that, that's one example. Multitude of sick people. You went there and just healed one person and went away. Uh -uh. What about others? At the gate called Beautiful, an invalid man that had been there for many years, about 40 years of age. Jesus had been passing that place, going to that temple. And left that man unhealed. It was Peter that now healed him. Mm -hmm. If I healed everybody on earth, which one will I be doing? If somebody doesn't think it's a fair argument. The argument is not. The argument here is my father walked in this way, and me, I'm following the example. That's a pure argument. The argument here is that at that particular pool of Bethsaida, the ordinance is one person healed at a time. That's the ordinance there. That's what the Father has been doing for many years. An angel comes, troubles the water, discharges an anointing, and one person goes in there and gets healed. When Jesus holds school, said he heals many people, sometimes everybody. But when he went there, he followed what the Father has been what? Doing. QED. That's the principle. That's the principle. Some of us who have gone there and out there and want to clear the whole pool. No. God left that pool as a reminder in the nation of Israel that he's still alive. When they start forgetting, the angel comes down again. Yes. Who did sin that this man was born blind? He said, nobody. But it's just that the work of God might be made manifest. God has to prove himself to every generation. He said, the poor you always have with you. If they finish, who are we going to show mercy to? But don't join them all. If you decide to join them, that's your business. Just like I'm talking about the sick now, those who heal. 
Somebody will be getting the message. Eh, is that why God is not healing me? That's your business. Oh. In the covenant, there is nobody denied healing. The truth is, once you know the covenant, nothing can be denied from you anymore. That's the truth. That's the truth. So you go for crusade, ten people are healed. Magnify. You see how they re recorded it here? They recorded it. They didn't record who didn't he get healed. They recorded the one that got healed. You ignore the one that got healed. And I'm not so sure that by the time the testimony of that one man get to everybody lying on that pool, the pool will reduce. They will now look for where Jesus is next. Go and get themselves out of the mess. Because they are waiting for old covenant when the new covenant has arrived. That's what dominion life is all about. Studying what God is doing and doing the same thing. Studying how the Father operates and operating like that. That is dominion life. Then you are living what you are created in Genesis on the sixth day to do. An image and likeness of God. You are manifesting sonship. You are acting like your father. If he's in a village or so, they say you are your father's son. Who has any translation that speaks some good English about these statements of Christ from verse 19 to 21? And then, and I learned something else. Jesus said, I don't have all the revelation of what the father is doing or his operations but one thing i'll tell you is the father loves the son and he will show him everything that he's doing so he said this one is just crippled man oh. he said the father will show the son greater works that you may marvel and the man started releasing his faith for raising the dead and it wasn't long he said it so i don't know where you and god has reached now step to the next level if it is headache, you have conquered. Step to cancer and crippled legs. If you have broken through that leg, start believing for dead people. And there is a revelation behind every mighty work. See the revelation I'm showing you now. This one is behind reordering creation. And reordering the year. So, when, once that revelation is not there, you can't operate it. So, the same way, you have to trust God to give you the revelation behind raising cripples. It's not easier, it's not harder than headache. It's the one you have. All faith are based on revelation. All. Somebody's faith is working better than your own. There's something he has inside him more than you. He has more insight in certain areas than you. Simple. When God opens my eyes and I put to work certain principles and they are yielding results, and I start sharing it with you, the purpose is to lift you to that level. After I've shared it, and you have got your own revelation of that same subject, then there's no more mystery about it. That third day is let the earth bring forth. Everyone say what? What is the meaning of that? Before that statement, I want you to notice the two statements that were made there. First, let the waters clear. Let dry land appear. Say it. Did you remember the day Moses took the people through the Red Sea? It's a kind of dividing the Red Sea so that a way or opportunity will be made. Now, the question is what opportunity? What is that thing that appeared? It is a bank that has been buried that has all the wealth we will ever need on this earth. This thing you call earth that God said appear is where he put all the wealth that human beings will ever need on this earth. The minerals are there. The oils are there. The golds are there. The diamonds are there. The aircraft will fly there. The houses you will build there. The table there. The trees there. The animals there. The food there. The meat there. The rice there. The oil there. Everything was hidden inside it. It's wealth. It's bank. That God said appear. Since then, there is nothing that we, we have needed here in terms of resources or wealth that has come from any place except here. So you can see what God was calling forth. Now, what do you need? Car. 
Let the earth bring it forth. What do you need? Job. You see, and all it takes is something to divide, something to shift. And 6.2 billion people on earth. Among them, you even see unbelievers doing well and a believer is suffering. I don't understand that one. No. As a song, Jesus said, go to the water, put a hook. You will get money to pay tax. Pay for yourself and me. We're not supposed to pay, but let's not start defending our rights because there is enough resources to take care of that. In God's head, nothing is scarce. It's in your head that there is scarcity. Scarcity, you know, that's what they teach you in economics, political economy. You did some course in economics. They talk about uh, scarce resources. Huh? So that's why we have to manage, prioritize, and all that. In God's economy, there is no scarcity. There is excess and abundance. God doesn't say uh, there are 10 million people, so let's create oxygen enough for 10 million. What he will do is he will create oxygen enough for uh, 10 trillion. Then he will create a system for supplying every bit they remove. So since we came here, 6.2 billion people have been taking oxygen. It has not dropped in quantity. It hasn't. Because the resupply system has been put in place. If oxygen, you're not getting enough in your room. It's you that created a prison. Break some wall and expand your window. It's not God that is, that is reducing supply. You know, our mind can imprison us. Was it last time meeting I had to deal with this issue? Scarcity mentality. Let the earth bring forth. You know what God told me? He said, after I told the earth to appear, the next thing is, I told it to start what? Releasing everything it had. Telling the earth to appear. God knew what he put in the earth. Look at what I'm wearing. Earth. Cotton. This table. Earth. Your aircraft. Earth. This building. Earth. Every bit of the pieces of this, including the paint. Everything. Earth. My shoe. Earth. Even your body. Earth. It's only you that is not for here. Let there be a dividing of the sea so that the earth can appear. And then after it appears, let it bring forth. There were a number of times the earth was addressed to bring forth. How can I be in any way? The Bible says, if I be willing and obedient, I will eat what? The good of the land. I need to speak to the city to what? Bring forth. Let the gates open up to me. Let the resources come forth and attend to the purpose for which God placed me here. You see some of these we are quarreling over. It's, it's our fate, oh. One cup of water poured down. There's ocean. Do you see how much water God is pouring away every day in the name of rain? You are fighting. That's why you want to lose your marriage because one cup poured away. Can you imagine? They just put this wine for me. See how you are just passing and you kick the wine, he poured away. Oh, because of one glass of wine, you're about to lose your wife. Do you know where they got the wine? Vine. I paid a visit to some farms in South Africa where they are producing the grapes. You know, grapes, they used to make the wine. I saw grape wasting. I mean, grapes that can produce a tank full of wine, wasting. Some smelling. I ate grape till I got tired that day. My mouth was paining me. Excess vitamin C, yes. I see how you're about to mess up a whole family just because of it. It's a little word, though. What is here? I say, in God's word, nothing is scarce. Yet, if you reach day six, you cease to worship that God doesn't believe in waste. But scarcity mentality is a defect of the new creation. It's a defect. It's a disease. 
is a, is a disease. A new creation person should not be suffering from it. Mm. Men are, are scarce or husbands are scarce. Whether he's born again or not. They can preach all this. Let PCJ be talking. Or let one abroad guy just show up. You will see now. I'll just grab him with two hands. Then if an inner woman shows up, especially the ones that believe in testing, I will allow him to test. After all, once I get pregnant, they will go ahead. There are some part of this country, they believe in it, even this Eastern Nigeria. Don't trust the girls of these days or until she's pregnant. That will tell you from the one that the man is not marrying you. He just wants to have children. And after he gets them, you can become a pastor. I mean, I don't care. Oh. Her husband is cast these days. Oh. If her husband is cast, it's after the child of God has finished collecting. Then whatever is left can be shared to others. For your sake, the guy will just get born again now. And he's undergoing discipleship. Why you are here saying, Lord, is this your guy is just in level one? He doesn't know you yet, or he might even be somewhere else. Lord, it must be this year. From Casanova, he has become a man of God. All of a sudden, he decides to pay a visit to Enugu. Then he hears of dominance, he comes. Then he, and then, hey, how are you? In the midst of so many people, it's you. You see application. Somebody will now start calling husband. Let the head release husband. Let the head release husband. That's just one application. One application. One application. The important thing is let the earth produce. Bring forth. And what is it bringing forth? Lepeke. Sereshake. All the things that pertain to life, I'm going to. <laughs> Can somebody say amen? amen? Nobody looking for job in this group now, after this day, again, because you shouldn't be looking for job. Amen. You are actually one of those sent to create jobs. You know, Genesis chapter 1. Fourth day. So we see first day, knowledge, light. Second day, the blessing or the anointing. Or if you also want revival or awakenings or a move of the Holy Spirit. But if you just take it from anointing, you might miss the power to create word because anytime you hear about rain, is talking about that. There are two. There is one that empowers your financial activities, your career. There is one that equips you to do mighty works. So, which are, both of them are included there. Then the day the three is wealth creation. Is is the release of wealth, an opportunity to make it on earth. Is release of prosperity. Then they have the day four, which is Wednesday. And um, that day, the Bible said. Verse 14. Let there be light. So they want creation of light. But therefore, creation of lights. Remember, remember, I think it's a good thought to um, peak. The first day of Solomon's reign as a king, what did he seek? The first thing he went for was light. And he changed the man's destiny. Some of us will start by money, looking for money. Some of us will start by God saw him as a wise man. Because the first thing God himself sought in order to be able to be who he is, that is the church of the universe, is light. The Bible tells you that wisdom is what? The principal thing. 
in all that I get, I don't care how many cares you have, how many uh, houses you have, how many suits you have. In all that I get, in, put this one first. Get understanding. It, there's a scripture that talks about how that this was the first investment God made for himself. And on earth is the first thing he instituted. He spent a whole day on it. I think I should show it to you. Psalm, uh, Proverbs chapter 8. Verse 1. Does not wisdom cry and understand and put forth her voice. She standeth in the top of the high places. By the way, in the places of the path. She cried at the gates. At the entry of the city. At the coming in at the doors. So obviously this guy is standing as you are entering Lagos. And you see 500,000 people enter that city every year. They ignore him and pass. They are looking for money. 20 years after you see some of them still frustrated. Then you see multitudes under the bridge. You climb over the bridge. You see them struggling and suffering. Me, I just entered that place last two years. <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 yeah. With a small bag. No house. Nothing. I always give myself this opportunity every seven years. If this thing is working, let it work. If it's not working, I, I'll go back to school because I know it works. So, so I'll go back to school in case I've started forgetting some of the key things. Every seven years, I, I take all the foundation school courses all over again. Recently, now, and I made up my mind I've, I've, with my arrival in Lagos that it will be reduced to three, three years or three and a half years. Because of what happened to me after taking it the last time. Every seven years, I go back from the most remote message and take all of them all over again. You can't grow these things. People will leave this guy and there are those three men like this at the entrance of Lagos. Anthony, have you arrived? Welcome. We are wizards. We will show you in this town. You are escaping from your village. You think this place is bed of roses. Oh, yeah, come. Three Yoruba elders. Edugu, as you are entering, just there. Uh, what do you call that place? From Express. Jomu. Market. New market. You see the we chains. Chains. Ah, some people entered here. They collected their own. <laughs> but on that same side, wisdom is standing. So as you are coming here, I know you are coming here for career, for attend to me first. Let me give you what it takes. They will ignore light. And time for preaching. Time for God. But they go to church, yo, because they like praise and worship. They like you. you know. <laughs> Does not wisdom cry and understand and put forth her voice. She standeth at the top of the high places. She cried at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call. Wisdom is talking of my voice is to the sons of men. O ye simple, understand wisdom. Ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things. The opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness, and there is nothing forward or perverse in them. Verse 11. Verse 10 says, Receive my instruction and not silver. Knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that thou may desire are not to be compared to it. I don't care what are your goals, what you are believing, what you are desiring. None of them. Pay the price for insight. Remember that after prayer, prayer only gives you the spiritual equivalent of anything. Then work gives you the physical equivalent. Prayer can create opportunity. It takes work to maximize opportunity so you can produce what you want. So there is a spirit of wisdom which can be given in response to prayer. But you have to study. You have to invest in tapes. You have to invest in training like this in order to get the result of it. But because I also pay the price of prayer, 
I already have the factory in my spirit. It doesn't matter what you share to me or share with me or preach to me or the message I have. That factory processes it. But that's what Solomon got. Wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that thou may desire and not to be compared with it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, prudence and find the knowledge of witty invention. Verse 14, counsel is mine. Sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and the nobles, even all the nobles of the earth. I love them that love me. And those who seek me early shall do what? Shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches. So when Solomon found this, he found these other ones. Yea, durable riches. Verse 21, that I might cause those that love me to inherit wealth. And I will fill their treasures. Verse 22, read it with me, one to go. The Lord possessed me when? In the beginning of his way, before his works of old. Why start praying for car, praying for business, praying for this, when there is no light yet? It's the first thing God went for. It's the first thing we are, you know, that is recommended to us to go for. Wisdom is more important than power. Yes, it's more important than anointing. To know the ways of God is more important than doing the works of God. Because the one that knows his way will do his work. The one that is just doing works in ignorance might lose the God of the works. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his ways before all his works of old. Verse 23, I was set up from everlasting from the beginning even before the earth was. When there was no depth, I was brought forth. When there was no fountain abandoned with water, before the mountains were set to, before the hills, was I brought forth. Why as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. This guy that helped God create all these things. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set the compass upon the face of the, de the deep. When he established the clouds above. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth. Then I was by him as one brought up with him. I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him. Rejoicing in the habitable part of the earth. And my delight were with the sons of men because they have to live in the habitable part. Now, therefore, hearken unto me, O you children, for blessed are they that keep my ways, hear instruction, and be wise, and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my door. For whosoever findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. The one creation light. If that's how God started, that's how I want to start. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Haven't you noticed that any minister that has this thing, they stand out? Haven't you noticed? In the midst of many who are talking, any ones that have this mark, they always stand out. Is the first thing to seek. Therefore, Genesis chapter 1. Hey, I, I'm saying that I don't want to preach this, and I'm, what is happening? It's already nine. Let's, let's try and see how to make it faster. Therefore, uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 14 and, and God said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night mm -hmm. <laughs> let them be for signs for seasons for days and years let them be for lights 
in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and it was so who did god create on the four first he created lights secondly he created what you and i know as times and seasons as what and we're going to pray we're going to pray on this issue now what did he create actually let, let me read the conclusion let me read the conclusion and god made two great lights the greater light to rule the day the lesser light to rule the night and he made the stars also and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. There are two major principles here that, you know, if you get them fundamentally, then you can, you can take off in whatever way you want to apply First of all, I think I should start with the second one. The issue is this concept called timing. Why day one, it is knowledge. Day two, it is the blessing and the anointing. Day three, it is prosperity or provision. Day four, is your season. Because no matter what it is that you have going, people can lose everything by missing their timing, their seasons. And then when you talk about having your season, what is relevant about your season? It is the seasons of your what? Manifestation. There are seasons of your visitation. There are seasons of your manifestation. There is what is called the seasons of life. That's what these heavenly bodies were created to govern. I want to make two clear points here that I want you to use as we pray. Number one, as you look up in the night sky and you see the stars, Realize that each one of them represents one person on earth. Today we say we have about 6.2 or 2, maybe to 6.5 billion people on earth. You have everybody there represented in heaven. And each of them have their timings to appear. I hope you know that sometimes you look, you see few stars. The other times you look, you see many. The other times you look, it's as if it's only one. The other times... That is what is going on. Each star has its own season to appear. And when he appears, they have influence on earth. Some of them regulate harvest. There are some stars that when they appear here, there will be famine. Rain will not fall here. There are stars that when they appear, there will be more volcanic eruptions. There are stars. Each one has his own sign or ordinance it governs on earth. For example, there is one that when he appeared, it means the avatar, the messiah has been born. Now, this is not about horoscopes and these guys who are into astrology by reading the stars. That's not important. But the truth is that the LM, the, the, what they are tapping into is true. But the one about controlling your days by... But the truth is that the knowledge of the fact that destinies of men and circumstances and seasons of life are coded in this heavenly body is true. It's a fact of life. And I can spend time showing you many scriptures on that. The, the magis... Those magis were not prophets or born again people. They were, they were astrologers. Could look up and read his destiny. And read his star and follow it. And amazing thing about that particular star of David is that he stayed in the orbit for two solid years. For how many years? From the time they saw it to the time they located the person he was talking about, two years have passed. Herod asked them, he said, when, last did, when did you see this first? They told him two years ago. And that's why people have been trying to find out which part of the east. He said, wise men from the east. Which part of the east? The east in question is the East Asia, Middle East. You know, Some are even taking it further to far East Asia. But two years to get to Jerusalem. Which country was that? Where were they coming from? That took up to two years. So don't think it was just their immediate neighbors. Men, some are predicting that it could be China even. Some are saying it could be from some of these other, you know. If you check, the, apart from Christianity, the three most powerful world religions, they all deal with the worship of these heavenly bodies. It's an abomination to God. You are not supposed to worship it. What we are teaching you is that you have dominion over these things. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Mm. 
you, you will see issues about the programming of the seasons of your life. That's why these men who are in the dark side, they look at a young girl with a bright future. It, it's coded there. They go and tamper with it. Can't get married. Her timings will come. Something will just be going wrong. It might even be for her own end. She will just be too choosy. Or they might program it. It might just be coming from the men. Come around and run. Come around and run. This night, you are going to speak to the seasons of your life. And if you have missed your season, let your star reorientate and appear again. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let God give you a second chance. If you have missed a season, because missing season is very dangerous. Actually, sometimes some people will miss it. They never... Because it, the whole cycle will have to go full, full length. i give an example. A woman, this time for productivity, fruitfulness. How many days do they have? Four days to be pregnant in a month. She misses those four days. You can do all that you want every night. She will have to wait till she gets back there. The problem is that in life, sometimes it could be 10 years later. It could be 15 years later. It could be 20 years. Moses missed one. It was 40 years later. But there is also a mystery about here. Because God said, I will restore to you the years that the canker worm has it. There is a mystery here. Once the Holy Spirit was explaining it to me, I said, Lord, how? Is it possible to recover? He said, didn't you see what I did? He asked Ezekiah, whose time has just expired. He said, put your house in order. You are about to die. The guy said, Lord, please. Remember how I said, do you remember this? Remember that? The prophet said, okay. There is a mystery about restoration of time. What do you want? Time to go 10 degrees forward or 10 degrees backward. As the guy said, I'm not talking about going forward. Don't spend more time for me. Give me back some years. The prophets carried out that action. Which you and I have. This is an Old Testament man. And the son did what? Move back. Can you imagine after going forward? He moved back. Can you imagine me now? Returning us this whole place back to 3 p.m. The one passed, not the one in, of tomorrow. The yesterday's one. And the sun moved back 10 degrees. And after they calculated, it means 15 years have been recovered. We just wiped 15 years from the years you spent. So you can leave it all over again. God did it for Job. After Job lost everything, it wasn't just that Job was, uh, what happened is that they rewind his life, his seasons. That's what happened. They rewind his season. So that the kind of impact of age he should have had at 70 started appearing at 100 and something. So he can, because if, if you just give me children and I'm now too weak and all that, you cheated me, Lord. What did I do to deserve this? He, wiped, he, he gave the devil permission to wipe the man's family in one day. So you have to give him back his life so that he will see all these children grow. And he saw them all grow again, the new ones all, all grow again and marry. And they were the finest kids in the whole place. And his wealth even doubled and tripled. Seasons. Seasons of productivity, seasons of preparation. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 said there is time for everything. And there is time for every purpose. What? under the sun. The worst thing is missing our time. And brothers and sisters, I want to let you know our time has come. As Africans, our season has arrived. There were many things we were struggling for many years to do. It was like growing trees or seed or a farm in a dry season. But now, the rain, rainy season has come. This is planting season and reaping season. For Africa, our own season has come. This is the time for you to be ahead in Europe, in U.S., just like we've been hearing about Clifford Dollar, Kenny Hagen, and all that. It's time for books from here to be changing the world. Can't you see the kind of revelations that is emerging from Africa? Just watch. Some of you think, just because I'm here with you, these things will take it outside the shore of Nigeria. People will wonder, what, what, is it, is it this, this Bible that you are reading, or is there another Bible? That's the kind of thing. 
Remember how we used to, when we read Kenneth Hagen books and all these people's books, and it's only anything that comes from America that is serious. Get ready now. It is made in Africa that will be ready. That's why anybody is still postponing the D-Day. Time is running now. We have entered our season. And I want you to know there have been a lot of seasons of preparation, seasons of... But from 2006, the countdown has started. These are now seasons of manifestations. I said we are now in seasons of manifestations. Arise and shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. This is the end of this part. Please play the next tape in the series.